जय सीता रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पत नम बालकांड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फोर लेयर In the previous chapter we saw that Lord Rama, Lakshmana and Vishwamitra spent the second night after they left Ayodhya in the ashrama of Lord Shiva's disciples it's known as Kama Ashrama and right now in this chapter we are going to see how they cross the river Ganga and Vishwamitra recites the story of Tataka In Ayodhya Kant we will see that Rama Lakshmana and Sita have to cross river Ganga and at that time Guha the Nishada arranges for a very beautiful boat for the three of them to cross and one of Guha's kinsmen ferries them across the river Ganga but this place is at the confluence of river Sarayu and river Ganga whereas Guha's place Koshringabhirpura was beyond the realms of Koshala kingdom and we will learn that when we come to Ayodhya Kant so it's not as if this place is Shringabhirpura we should realize that Ganga is a fairly large river and there are multiple cities along that river and shringabhirpura is not close by and we have to understand that rama lakshmana and vishwamitra are at the confluence of sarayu and ganga at the moment verse 1 tatah prabhate vimale krita ahnikam arindamau vishwamitram putras krithya nadiya tiram upagato The world awoke to a new day and the valiant princes rising with the dawn discharged their morning duties and followed the preceptor to the banks of the mighty river verse 2 Teja sarve mahatmano muniya samshrita vrata upasthapya shubham navam vishwamitram atha abruvan Meanwhile their saintly hosts had prepared a beautiful boat to take them across and reverentially addressing themselves to Vishwamitra said to him verse 3 Aruhato bhavan navam rajaputra puraskrita arishtam gacha panthanam ma bhut kal viparyaya May it please you to get into this boat along with your worthy disciples. We have delayed you enough. Now a happy journey to you all the way and every good go with you. Verse 4 Vishwamitra tatha iti uktva tan rishin prati pooja cha tatara sahita tabhyam saritam sagaram gamam Vishwamitra saluted them and with reluctant leave of the kind-hearted ones crossed over the sacred stream with his pupils verse 5 tatra shushrava vai shabdam toya samrambha varditam madhyam agamya toyasya tasya shabdasya nischayam ज्ञातु कामो महातेजा सह राम कनीयसा When they were in the middle of the current Rama and his younger brother heard a mighty sound proceeding from the confluence of swift coursing waters and turned to his teacher to know its significance Verse 6 अथ राम सरिन मध्ये पप्रच्छ मुनिपुंगवम वारिनो बीधयामानस्य किम अयम तुमलो ध्वनै ब्राह्म इन्क्वायर्ड ऑफ विश्वामित्र द बेस्ट ऑफ सेजेस व्हाट इज दिस ट्यूमंटुअस साउंड बर्स्टिंग आउट ऑफ द वाटर्स वर्स 7 राघवस्य वचः श्रुत्व कौतूहल समन्वितम् कथया मास धर्मात्मा तस्य शब्दस्य निश्चयम् 
At the words of Rama, filled with curiosity, the righteous Vishamitra narrated the true nature of that sound. So once again, Valmiki is specifying the attitude called Kautuhalam, that means curiosity. Rama was curious to know about the history of Kamashrama and now he is curious to know something else. He is curious to know the gushing sound that is emanating from the waters. And this is called a curiosity to learn, the inquisitiveness to learn. And how does he ask his guru? It is Papracha, that means very humbly inquired. So this is how knowledge is transferred and we are seeing that Rama is very eager to learn more and in the previous chapter we have already discussed the significance of the word Kautuhalam because Rama is wanting to learn more about Kamashrama because of his curiosity or Kautuhalam. And we have already seen that when Valmiki asked Narada about the person who possesses all 16 perfect qualities, he says, Param Kautu Hilam Hime, I am extremely curious, O sage. So especially in Balakanda, during the youth, we should be extremely curious to learn new things. And we should ask the Guru very carefully and assimilate their knowledge. Verse 8. Kailasa Parvate Rama Manasa Nirmitam Param Brahmana Narashardula Ten Idam Manasam Saraha O oh, best among men, Rama, on the heights of the far-famed Kailasa, there exists a lake of supreme sanctity brought into existence by an act of will of the four-faced one, and hence its name Manasa Lake. So clearly this is the origin of Manasa Rover. Verses 9 and 10. Tasmat susrava sarasa sa ayodhyam upaguhate sara pravritta sarayu punya brahma sara chuta tasya ayam atula shabdo janvim abhi vartate vare sankshobhajo rama pranamam nayata kuru a stream issuing from that holy spot comes down the heights and falls into Ganga, passing by the capital of your father, Ayodhya, and hence its name, Sarayu. The sound, so wonderful to your young ears, proceeds from the meeting of its holy waters with the rapid current of the divine Ganga, and you will do well to offer your reverent salutations unto it. Verse 11. Tabhyam tu tavubhau kritva pranamam ati dharmikau tiram dakshinam asadya jagmatur laghu vikramau. Extremely righteous in nature, the princes obeyed him accordingly and made obeisance to the two rivers. Then they reached the southern bank and advanced with quick steps. So Rama and Lakshmana are not just known as Dharmiko, they are known as Ati Dharmiko. That means the two who are exceedingly righteous. And it's mentioned that they came to the Dakshinam Tiram, that means the southern bank of the river Ganga. Verse 12. Savanam Ghora Sankasham Drishtva Naravaratmaja Avi prahatam ekshvaka papracha munipungavam. Soon they came upon a frightful forest, devoid of the presence of Brahmanas, at the sight of which Rama, curious to know everything about it, addressed himself to Vishwamitra and said, Verse 13 Aho vanam idam durgam jhlika ganasam yutam. 
भैरवैश्वापदे कीर्णम शकुने दारुण आरवै लॉर्ड दिस वुड फिल्स मी विथ क्यूरियोसिटी It resounds with the hoarse cries of terrible beasts of prey, rendered all the more fearful by the screams of wild birds and numerous flying insects. Verse fourteen. Nana prakare shakunai vashyad bhi bhairavasvanai simha vyagra varahai cha varnai cha pi shobhitam. Lions, tigers, boars, and elephants—not to speak of numerous winged creatures—lend the aid of their dreadful presence to heighten the horror of the scene. Verse fifteen: Dhava Ashvakarana kakubhay bilva tindu ka patalei sankiranam badri bhi cha kim nu ete darunam vanam. and this forest so dreadful and uninviting is dense with countless trees such as dhava ashvakarna kakubha bilva tinduka patala badari and many others of unknown origin and properties verse 16 tam uvacha mahateja vishvamitro mahamuni shruyatam vatsa kakutsa Yasya etat darunam vanam. Then Vishwamitra, the great sage, radiating energy, addressed Rama as follows: "O child of the Kakutsa dynasty, I shall tell you whose dreadful forest this is. Listen, verse seventeen." जनपद स्फीत पूर्व आस्ता नर उत्तम मलद च करुष च देव निर्माण निर्मित ओ बेस्ट अमंग मेन लॉन्ग इयर्स गर्ल दीज ट्रैक्स नोन एज मलद एंड करुष व टू लॉर्ज एंड प्रॉस्परस सिटीज दट व बिल्ट बाय द सिलेस्टियल आर्किटेक्ट्स verse 18 pura vritta vadhe rama malen sam abhiplutam kshada chaiva sahastraksham brahma hatya sam avishat once upon a time it befell that indra slew the asura vritra he happened to be a brahmana therefore indra accrued the sin of killing a brahmana The sin took shape and entered into him along with hunger and uncleanliness overpowering his divine form and nature. Verse 19 Tam indram malinam deva rishyacha tapodhana kalashe snapaya masu malam cha asya pramochayan The gods and sages had him purified with the waters of holy rivers consecrated with powerful mantras to rid him of his defilement verse 20 iha bhumyam malam datva deva karusham evacha sharira jam mahendrasya tato harsham prapedire It was here that his foul uncleanliness fell away from him having consigned to this place the uncleanliness and the hunger that afflicted him the hearts of the gods were glad verse 21 nirmalo nishkarusha cha shuddha indro yatha abhavat tato deshasya supritu varam pradad anuttamam and indra Overjoyed at finding himself free from his troubles and pure once more, in a transport of gratitude, did he confer a boon on this place. Verse twenty-two. Imau janapados fihito khyatim loke gamishyataha maladah cha karusha cha mama anka maladhari no. These two populous provinces have helped to receive the foulness of my body and they shall be celebrated on earth as Malada and Karusha. 
verse 23. Sadhu sadhu iti tam devah pakashasanam abruvan dashasya poojam tam drishtva kritam shakrena dhimata. The devas applauded his act and his sense of reverence to the place that gave him back his pristine beauty. Verse 24 Eto janapato svito dirg kalam arindama maladacha karushacha mudita dana dhanyataha O subjugator of the enemy, for long years thereafter, these places were the homes of happy millions living in plenty and blessed with everything that man could get from nature. Verses 25 and 26 Kasya chit atha kalasya yakshi kama rupini balam naga sahasrasya dharayanti tadahi abhut Tataka nam bhadram te bharya sundasya dhimata maricho rakchasa putro yasya shakra parakrama then there came upon earth a yaksha woman who had the strength of a thousand elephants and could take any form at will. She was a wife of Sunda, and Tataka, for so she was named, bore him a son, Maricha, who equaled Indra himself in prowess. So before Vishwamitra introduces Tataka and Maricha, he calls Rama as Arindama, the one who can subjugate his enemies. So, even though he portrays Tataka as someone who is as strong as 1000 elephants and Maricha, her son, to be equal to Indra himself in prowess, he is showing us, the readers of the future generation, that Rama can easily defeat them. That's the reason why Rama is addressed as Arindama in the previous verse. Verse 27 Vritta Bahur Mahashir So Vipula Asya Tanur Mahan Rakchasa Bhairava Akaro Nityam Trasayate Prajha Huge of bulk and strong of arm, the Rakchasa held the people of these kingdoms in abject terror by his matchless might and frightful countenance and form. Verse 28 Imao Janapado Nityam Vinashayati Raghava Maladamscha Karushamscha Tataka Dushtacharini While Tataka amused herself with destroying the innocent inhabitants hereabouts by hundreds and by thousands. Verse 29 Sa iyam panthanam avritya vasati adhyardha yojane ata evacha gantavyam tatakaya vanam yata Yonder has she taken up her abode about half a yojana from here and hence people steer clear of these parts as the own preserves of tataka. Verse 30 Sva Bahu Balam Ashritya Jahi Imam Dushtacharinim Mat Niyogat Imam Desham Kuru Nishkantakam Punaha Slay her with your strong arm and rid these fair lands of a great pest, for I command you thereunto. Verse 31 Nahi kaschit imam desham shaktohi agantum idrisham yakshinya ghoraya rama utsaditam asahyaya. I tell you again that none dare to enter these regions through which the dreadful yakshini ranges free and unhindered. Verse 32 Etat te sarvam akhyatam yatha etat darunam vanam yakshya cha utsaditam sarvam adhya api na nivartate. 
And now you know as well as I how these once fair and populous lands have been laid waste beyond all hope of recovery, said Vishamitra to Rama. So Sage Vishamitra has given the overall layout of the region of Malad and Karusha and thanks to the havoc spread by Tataka and her valiants and Maricha, no one is staying in these once prosperous lands. And in the next chapter, we will see that Rama has a couple of follow-up questions to the comments made by Sage Vishwamitra. And at the very onset, Vishwamitra says that Rama has to slay Tataka. Now, Rama wants to know some more details about Tataka. And we will see that in the next chapter. Mangalam Koshalendraya Mahaniya Gunapde Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarvabhaumaya Mangalam Jai Sitaram